guys, welcome back to this channel. In this video, I'll be sharing with you guys one of Malaysia's most gruesome murder, which is the Mona Fendi case. Let's go! Nur Mazda Ismail, more commonly known by her stage name as Mona Fendi, is Malaysia's pop singer and a local shaman. After she left the music industry, she became involved in black magic activities. Then, in 1993, she had a new title, a murderer. So, who did she kill? A state assembly meant for the constituency of Batu Talam, Mazlan Idris sought the services of Mona Fendi to boost his political career. Mazlan Idris was convinced that if he had the talisman, the songkok, and the cane which was said to belong to the late Indonesian President Sukarno, he would be invincible. In return, Mona demanded 2.5 million ringgit. Mazlan paid Mona and her husband 500,000 ringgit as deposit and gave them 10 land titles as surety for the remaining 2 million ringgit. Then, he died. An appointment was arranged for cleansing rituals to be performed at Mona's house. Mazlan Idris didn't know what awaited him. At Mona's house, he was told to lie down on the floor with his eyes closed to wait for money to fall from the sky. The couple's assistant, Jurami, chopped Mazlan's head off with an axe. Mazlan's body was dismembered and was partially skinned. His body was found in 18 parts buried in a storeroom located in Mona's house near Pahang. Mona, her husband, and Jeremy were arrested and a highly publicized trial began. The three of them were tried in the Tamalo High Court by a panel of seven juries. The High Court found all three of them guilty and they were sentenced to death by hanging. Mona and the others filed appeals to the Federal Court, but the Federal Court dismissed their appeals and upheld the death sentence. The three of them sought to obtain a clemency or pardon from the Pardons Board of Pahang for their last chance of redemption. However, the board refused to give clemency. The three of them were hanged to death on November 2, 2001 at the Kajang prison. It was mentioned that the Mona case was tried by a seven-person jury. But what exactly is a trial by jury? Ideally, if you have a panel of jury that is selected at random, the verdict they deliver is representative of the everyday man. In addition to this, the jury works toward cancelling out bias while also keeping the system democratic. Back then in Malaysia, the jury was called in for very specific circumstances, for crimes that were punishable by the mandatory death sentence. This is in contrast to the United States where any person who is charged for a crime punishable for imprisonment for up to six months has the constitutional right to a trial by jury. Malaysia used to have a panel of seven people to serve as the jury. Anyone who is above 21 years old is eligible to serve, unless you have an unsound mind or other forms of disabilities. Also, unless you have a very good reason, you cannot say no to jury duty because it is a part of your civic duty. But what if I really don't want to perform my civic duty? No big deal, you just be liable under section 174 of the penal code. Back to the courtroom. At the risk of oversimplification, the jury's job is to consider the facts of the case, the evidence placed before them and the direction given by the judge to decide whether or not the accused is guilty. To reach a verdict, the jury retires to a chamber where they deliberate in secrecy. 
Doesn't this sound like a better idea where people like you and I decide the fate of the criminals instead of leaving it to the possibly out of touch judges? But why was the jury system abolished? The biggest factors of the abolishment can be seen in Mona Fendi's case, where the sensational nature of this whole thing is the leading cause for the abolishing of the jury system in Malaysia. This is because the influence of the media is capable of influencing the thought process of juries. The Malaysian government at that time also cited reasons such as juries not being legally trained and are capable of being swayed by emotions and public opinions. Consequently, juries may reach a perverse decision. There were also records of the parliamentary debate on this issue back in 1994 where several factors which led to the abolishment of the jury system was also laid down. Juries were easily convinced by the arguments of the defence counsel and some of them didn't feel responsible for a person's death sentence. Besides, there's also an argument which says that the jury system does not work in multiracial countries like Malaysia as it could lead to racial biasness. Therefore, there is a possibility that the decision is made based on emotions or popular perceptions that are against the particular defendant which would have an adverse effect on the fairness of the trial. Hence, the jury system was abolished. This is the end of this video and I hope you had a better understanding of the jury system in Malaysia and why it was abolished. If you have any law-related topics that you're interested to know, feel free to comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, click on the notification bell, give a thumbs up and share this video. See you guys in the next video.